that brings us now to trastuzumab. And um, uh, there's been a lot that's been going on in the last uh, year or two. Um, and I think we'll go in reverse order uh, with a compound that was just approved very recently. Uh, I like to use its regular name, TDM1. I do not like Ked Kyla. I, I'm not a big fan of that. Did I pronounce it right? I never pronounced it. Ked Sila. See, I don't know how to pronounce it. I like TDM1, and I'm going to stay with it. But so, uh, Edith, can you tell us a little bit about Amelia? Well, uh, first, uh, you know, TDM1 is uh, the first mo uh, antibody drug conjugate uh, with activity uh, in the setting of breast cancer that has received FDA and other agencies' regulatory approval. And this was based on uh, really the Amelia trial as one of the trials done with, with this agent. It's a fascinating drug because it combines you know, the efficacy of trastuzumab uh, with the chemotherapy drug. So the idea is to deliver chemotherapy to the cells that are HER2 positive. So what Amelia did is that enrolled uh, about 991 patients uh, on a global basis who had been previously exposed to taxane and trastuzumab. The patients were randomized to two arms, either the previous standard, which was combination capsidabine lapatinib versus, at that time, the investigational arm, which was TDM1. The trial had a very interesting endpoint of progression-free and, and also overall survival. And, uh, it demonstrated that TDM1 was superior or better to the combination of uh, lapatinib and capsidabine in various ways. It was better in terms of progression-free survival, improving it by three months, it was better in terms of overall survival, improving it by five months, and it was also better as it led to much fewer degree of toxicity compared to capsidabine lapatinib. You know, so this was a pivotal study. It changed the standards of care on a global basis, and it led to the approval of this agent. So I think there's no question based on this data that TDM1 is a superior strategy compared to the, the older combination. Right. I mean, there's a lot of questions that have kind of come from this trial. Um, you know, I think that uh, um, one thing that I know um, that uh, Genentech is trying to do is to say this is not really a chemotherapy agent. It's kind of this in-between. They'd like to use it in combination with other chemotherapies, such as paclitaxel or such as venerelbine. You know, and I, I know because we all have sat on committees where we've had these discussions with them. And I'm, I'm really curious to hear what people say. Do you consider it a chemo, an uh, antineoplastic chemotherapy? Do you consider it an, an antibody, or do you consider it both? So, I actually Andy, had I actually had a chance to speak with Dr. Ron Blum, who back in the 1970s was involved in some of those phase two trials of unconjugated metansinoid compounds. And if you go and look at those papers, these were really potent drugs, mm -hmm. but godly awful toxic um, mm -hmm. neuropathy, myelosuppression, gastrointestinal toxicity. So, when you look at the overall toxicity profile of this immunoconjugate. Um, you have to believe that the activity is preserved, but the toxicity is harnessed. Um, you, do, you are getting an antimicrotubule effect intracellularly, um, but you're not seeing, uh, you know, vinca-type side effects. You're not getting ileus and constipation. Um, so it, it's for me, it's it's tame to chemotherapy. But it's still chemotherapy. But I is mean, it chemotherapy? Oh, that's the question. Is it chemotherapy? Is it chemotherapy? 15, you know, well, that's it. Is it these transaminases are 120. I mean, there's still a toxin there. It's just that the exposure and uh, tolerance is much better, but it's still chemotherapy. And the, it's interesting because patients I had on TDM1 for many years had, you know, some thrombocytopenia that persisted after the end of therapy. So there's clearly some kind of cumulative exposure, although who knows where to because there's no drug circulating the metensinoid. Right. I mean, are there HER2 receptors in the bone marrow? I mean, you know, how does it, you know, on, 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 on you know, megakaryocytes? I mean, what's the, what's the explanation? You know, what's the explanation for this? We looked know? to see if those precursors of platelets and megakaryocytes Did you really? were effective. There's a published okay. paper that we, we put out. And? No. <laughs> okay. All right. That's interesting. We couldn't predict. All right. So, I mean, do people use this now in your practice? Does everybody use this? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah, since Normally. it was approved. Oh, yes. I mean, the question is going to be where to use it when the Marianne data comes out in the frontline setting, and are we going to burn through TDM1 and pertuzumab in the frontline setting if, if the data is positive for that combination? Well, we know from your phase two.